In this video, we'll be taking a look at three elegant motion graphic scenes and the simple techniques used to create them. Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Shulgan Solvers, this is Animation Deconstructed and we're gonna jump straight into the tutorial. So we're inside After Effects and I have just two text layers here and one solid background, which is just black. And I'm gonna come across and just add a four color gradient. So type in the letter four and we'll find this generate four color gradient. Next thing I wanna do is just change three of these to black. We can just spot. And then I'm going to change this one and I have a color here which you can follow along with if you want to. 4A3817, gonna press okay. Just take this right to the center here. You can do anything you like over here just to get some sort of texture going. Okay, and then I'm going to add a levels to this. And I'm just going to crunch down the colors slightly. Let's be accurate here. Let's say gamma 0.87 and I'll make this 235 on the output white. Next thing, let's animate our text. Let's do something simple. I'm going to press UU twice on the text layer. We'll see our animate dropdown come up. Before we do that, let's just reset our anchor point. So with the text layer selected, I'm gonna control double click on the anchor point tool at the top here. You'll see it jumps to the center. I'm gonna do the same to the bottom text. You'll see it jumps to the center. Next, I'm gonna to come to animate. Let's add an opacity and I'm gonna take this down to zero. I'm gonna drop down the range selector. Something to note, my composition is five seconds long. Let's keyframe the start at zero, move over to one second and drag this up to 100. I'm going to select both these keyframes, press the F9 key, go into the graph editor. Just make sure over here that you're in the edit speed graph. Going to select both of these and I'm going to pull back on this one. That should be enough over there. Let's just take a look. Press the S key for scale. Press Shift U to bring up our keyframes at the same time. I'm going to turn on the scale, move this over to match for one second, and then I'm going to scale this up 150%. Then I'm going to select both these keyframes, press the F9 key, and I'm going to go into the graph editor. I'm going to select both these. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pull this about here and then pull this about here. And that's looking good. I'm going to close the graph editor and press the U key three times. And then I'm going to copy the animator one and copy the scale by control selecting both of them. Control C or Command C on Mac. I'm going to pop that up, select my other text, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to move over to about the 15 frame mark and I'm just going to take my selection tool and just drag this forward. Let's press play and see how this looks. And I'm pretty happy with that for our text. So what we're going to be doing is actually taking a look at how we can easily create these lines over here. And what we need to do is actually create a new composition. So 1920 is our width. Let's just make this about 120 and I'm going to keep that at five seconds. Press OK. And then I'm going to come over to the rectangle tool. Let's just double click that to add a rectangle. U three times so that we can see the scale. I'm going to unlink that and I'm going to pull this in. I want to follow, let's say about 100 and let's make this 70. So what we're going to do is actually have a number of these duplicates all across here and they'll be animating on the vertical. Control D to duplicate this. I'm going to move this over and then just scale this down. Then I'll control D, move this over again and I'll do this a number of times. And just zoom in as well and we can make a few of these really thin. I'm going to duplicate these over so I don't waste your time and then we'll move along. So we're back in our composition and I just have a number of, of these. I also moved one off to the right because these will animate in and out automatically. What we're going to do is press the P key on one of these and I'm going to right click and we're going to separate the dimensions. This is going to allow us to actually just add a wiggle expression to the X position. I'm going to select all the rest of the layers. I'm going to press the P key. Let's just move this up so we can see it. I'm going to control click all of these positions, right click, separate dimensions, and then I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch of the X position, I'm going to type wiggle, I'm going to open my brackets, and we can type in there 0 0.6 comma, and I'm going to say 220. And what this means is just over half a second, this will move anywhere between zero and 220 pixels to the left or right. So it won't be very fast, it'll be quite smooth. And then I'm just going to press enter on my numpad. 
or you can click out. I'm going to actually click back in there, copy this, and then we can just alt click, control V, paste, and just go down and do this to the rest of the layers. So we have all our layers done. And if I just scroll across here, you'll see what's happening with our animation. Deselect everything, press the U key to close it all up. And I'm going to just reset my workspace so you can see it better. Let's also rename this to be lines. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it onto a composition and control K to bring up the composition settings, change the height to 1080. And then I want to press S for scale, unlink the scale. Let's just zoom out so we can see what's happening here. And I'm going to drag up and you'll see this feathers on the edges. So I want to go right past that. And then I'm going to duplicate this right click and I'm going to go to transform flip horizontal. Now, if I just go forward, we'll get quite an interesting animation. Just going to zoom back in there and do a play. Okay, I'm going to close those two. Let's rename this lines stretched and bring this into our scene just above our background. I'm going to add a gradient. So I'm going to type in gradient and you want to find gradient ramp. Double click that. I'm going to just reposition these. So the black can be somewhere around here and the white somewhere around here should be good. And I'm going to change the color of this white to B98934. Press OK. Then I'm going to come over to the effects and presets and I'm going to type in CC slant. Double click this. This, and I just want to slant this. It's say minus 45. The last thing I want to do is just darken the area over here. So I'm going to click on the background, go layer, new, solid, change this to black, press OK. I'm going to double click on the rectangle tool. It'll create a mask for us. I'm going to double click on the mask so that we can bring it across. Double click again. I'm going to zoom out just slightly and click outside. And I want to hover over this area over here, click and drag, and this will allow us just to slant this in the same angle. Next thing I want to do is press M three times until we see our mask properties. Unlink the mask feather, and I just want to feather it on the horizontal. Drag up here. That looks pretty good. In this next scene, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create the ribbon-like animation with the dust particles and the atmosphere. So I just have my scene here with the text animating still. I'm going to start this off by creating the ribbon effect. And I saw this somewhere and I wanted to try and figure this out. It's pretty easy. I don't know if this is the same way they did it, but I'm going to create a new composition. 1920, let's make the square 1920, press OK, zoom out, I'm going to double click on the rectangle tool, press U three times, unlink the size, let's make this 1900, and let's just drag this down. And I've got 1900 by 475, then I want to just pop that up and pop it down again, I'm going to come down to the transform rectangle, and let's skew this, I want my skew axis to be 90, then when we drag up on the skew, let's make that about 17. Next thing I want to do is add a gradient ramp. So typing in gradient, gradient ramp. You could also add a full gradient. This is just quicker. I'm going to make this go from white to black, left to right. Do something like this so that we'll have this 3D kind of look of a ribbon. I didn't name my composition, so I'm just going to name that now. Ribbon, flat. And then I'm going to drag this onto the Create Composition button. Let's just rename this Ribbon 3D. What I want to do now is just with that layer selected, come over to the Effects and Presets. We're going to type in CC Cylinder. I'm going to double click that. And you'll see straight away we get a cylinder looking ribbon. Let's drop down the rotation. I'm going to turn on the keyframe at zero for the rotation Y. Move over to five seconds and make this two revolutions. Let's just take a look at this. You can pop that up again. I'm going to duplicate this. And the reason I'm doing this because I want to have a top and bottom separate. So if we just turn this drop down on the render, we can actually select I want the outside. If I solo this layer, you'll see we just have the outside rendering of this. Let me move forward until I can see something like that. I'm going to drop down the light and I just want it a, a bit more intense. So the light height, if we just drag up on this, you can get to about 55. For the layer below, I am literally going to just change the render to inside T for opacity. And I want to take this down to 20%. And then we can close this, close that one back in our composition, come to our project panel, and we'll find that ribbon 3D. Drop this onto our background, we drag through. 
The reason I work in black and white is because it's really easy to recolor your artwork if the client needs changes or if you want to reuse these assets in another project. So coming over to the effects and presets, let's type in tint, double click to add tint. We're going to add that gold color which we've been using to the white. So B98934, press OK. Then let's just animate this in. I'm going to press the S key, turn the stopwatch on, I'm going to drag this to about one second, one and a half seconds. Then let's scale this up. I'm going to say about 200%. Shift T to bring up the opacity, turn that on. Let's drag this over just to about 10 frames and then take this down on frame zero to 0%. Zero I want this to ease in at the end here. So I'm going to select this keyframe at the end here, press F9, and I want the opacity to ease in. So I'm going to select the first keyframe and press F9. Let's take a look at this. Next thing I want to tackle is adding some particles to this. I'm going to just right click on our background, select layer, new, solid. I'm going to call this particles one, press OK. And I'm going to solo the background layer and solo the particles. I'm going to come over to the effects and presets, type in particles. And I want to use particle world, CC particle world, double click and you'll see something like this. Let's start off by changing our particle. So drop down the particle, change the line. Let's use a lens convex. And you'll see because our layer is black, it will initially set this to black particle. So I'm going to press Control Shift Y to bring up the solid settings and we can change this to white. Press OK. And the next few things I want to change are the birth size. So 0.09 looks good. And then the death size, let's say 0.1. I'll just Scrolling forward, we still have this gravity on, so I'm going to go over to physics and drop this gravity down to 0.01. I still want a little bit of it for these dust particles. Let's change the animation to cone, drag forward, looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom out for the next step. I want to make this pretty big. I'm going to hover over this widget and we're going to click and drag and then Let's just drag it to something like this. And zooming out, I'm going to click in the middle here and just drop this down to about here. Can make this quite a bit bigger as well. And that's still far too many particles. So the next thing we're going to do is actually go to the velocity. Let's take down the velocity to about 0.25. We've got five seconds here. Let's make the longevity five seconds. Let's make the birth rate 0.1 just give a preview of this. My particles are still a bit big. See my death size isn't 0 0.01, which needed to be at 0 0.1 at the moment. So 0 0.01, press OK, and we'll get a softer particle there. Next thing I want to do is take that layer and change the mode to classic color dodge, and we'll use the color from the background. Then I'm going to duplicate this control D, come over to the extras, and I'm going to change the random seed to one. And then I want to come over to the effects and presets. And I just want to add some blur to this. So I'm going to test the camera lens blur for this. Shouldn't actually have to do much with this. That looks, turn it on and off. That's perfect. We don't even need to play with these settings. I'm going to turn the soloing off and take a look at this. The last thing I want to do is actually add some texture to this, so some smoke. This is pretty easy. Let's just go over to Layer, New, Solid, call this Smoke, press OK, come over to the Effects and Presets. We're going to use a Fractal Noise for this. Double click that, drop down the Transform, unlink the Uniform Scaling. Let's scale this up to about 180 something and then double that on the other side about 360 and then I'm going to change the complexity let's take this right up it's about 18 then I'm going to play with the overflow brightness and contrast I'm going to take the contrast down also the brightness down see if we change this to soft clamp we'll get a softer kind of smoky texture then we can change the layer mode to classic color dodge maybe also drop the opacity down here to about 90 and I want to animate two things. So at zero, let's turn on the evolution and turn on the offset turbulence. Move over to five seconds. I'm going to drag across. It's plenty of movement. And then maybe about three revolutions here. I'm actually going to swap these scales over. So let's say 360 here and 180 here. One preview. 
In this last scene, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create this particle burst with these gold trails. This last version is pretty quick, so we're going to just come over to the timeline. I'm going to click on the background, go to layer, new, solid, and call this particles one. It's okay. The reason I actually click on the layer is so that it will create the layer directly above that. I'm going to go to the effects and presets, type in particles, particle, choose CC particle world. Let's just drag forward. I'm also going to solo this. Our layer is already white, so that will help us out. Let's take the physics off. So go to gravity and turn that off. Change our particle to lens convex. Let's change the size to something like we had. So 0 0.08 and then 0 0.01 for depth. Let's change the longevity to five again. This should be fine. We can always bring our birth rate down later. Next thing I want to do is come over to effects and presets, type in echo, double click that. Now I use echo quite a bit in a lot of my tutorials. This is a great way to create colorful motion blurs and I do have a tutorial on that. It'll pop up on screen over here and I'll also have it in the description. So let's Let's come over to echo time and you want to drag this pretty low so i'm going to try minus 0.01 just to start out you'll see these jump closer together then the number of echoes i want about 60 and this looks all right but i do want to play with the decay so let's say 0.9 and that's looking a lot better i need to take this slightly lower so 0.5 it looks pretty good so 0 0.005 uh, negative make sure let's add a fill to this and we're going to add that same color that we've been for the whole tutorial b98934 press ok i'm going to duplicate this i'm going to come over to the extras drop that down change the random seed to one and i'm going to make this color just slightly darker so we have several of them a different color and let's also take this birth rate down to one next thing i want to do let's unsolo everything i'm going to duplicate my background move it above all of this i'm going to come over to my ellipse tool i'm going to draw a mask on this right about here I'm going to hold down on the pen tool if that's what you've got selected choose the mask feather tool click and drag and we can control our feather pretty well just by adding points and dragging where the feather will be. V, just to select the point tool and deselect. Let's move this below our black layer. Actually, we can turn that off. Something like this looks pretty good. And then you can just create a new adjustment layer, choose levels and just crunch these numbers a bit to get something a bit more golden. One preview for this. If you want to see more of my videos, take a look at either of the videos popping up on screen right now. Keep animating, and until next time.